The course of Sri Lankan history was forever changed when Buddhism was brought to Sri Lanka by Arhat Mahindatera, the son of Emperor Ashoka of India. Along with the advent of Buddhism, Sri Lanka saw her socio-cultural development improve by leaps and bounds, spreading out from Mintalya where it all began. It was at Mintalya that King Devanam Piyatissa, the ruler of Lanka at the time, received the Buddhist teaching and from where the Buddhist philosophy set forth to the island. Following the advent of Buddhism, Teri Sangamitta brought the sacred Sri Mahabodhi sapling from India. The sapling originated from the original Bodhi tree that sheltered the Buddha when he attained enlightenment. Today, this revered Bodhi tree planted in Anuradhapura is one of the oldest trees of historical importance and a revered place of worship for Buddhists. Yet another attraction in Anuradhapura is the Samadhi Buddha statue. This statue carved out of granite and yet embodying the most delicate and intricate of finishers is the pinnacle of the art of carving Buddha statues. The Buddha statue in Ashoka Ramya, although not as well preserved as the Samadhi statue, portrays highly artistic features. The standing Buddha statue in Aukana situated not far from the main historical city of Anuradhapura, is yet another renowned creation of ancient Lankan artists. The 18-meter-high Tuparama Chaitya is possibly Sri Lanka's first Chaitya built in the 3rd century BC along with the advent of Buddhism to Sri Lanka. The 176 stone pillars surrounding the Chaitya are thought to have held up a roof for the structure. The Mirisavakya Dagaba is yet another renowned Dagaba of the Anuradhapura kingdom, standing at 49 meters high. The Ruan Melisaya is truly the apex of the Sri Lankan Chaitya tradition. Built by King Dutugamanu, the Chaitya stands at 59 meters high with a pinnacle painted in gold and the crest jewel or Chuda Manikya alone measuring 8 meters in height. This Chaitya of great importance in Anuradhapura is Abhyagiriya, constructed by King Vattagamini Abhya. It was completely destroyed over the centuries, but was reconstructed in recent times and now stands tall in the historic city. This Chaitya undergoing preservation work is the Jetavana Dagaba, constructed by the great King Mahasen. Its place in history has been assured as the world's largest brick structure. It is believed to have enshrined the Buddha's Patidahatwa. Lanka Ramya Situated within the Abhyagiriya monastic complex, it's thought to be the monastery for Buddhist nuns. The intricate carvings and artistry of the Sandakandapahana or Half Moonstone, a well-preserved specimen from the Anuradhapura era placed at the entrance to a building, still inspires awe in those who view it. Isirumunia, a place
place of great artistry constructed during the reign of King Kashipa between the 5th to the 6th centuries AD is celebrated for its artistic stone carving. Among them is the renowned carving of the lovers of Isurumunia, which has captured the imaginations of many art aficionados over centuries. The ponds and tanks of the Anuradhapura era too embody great architectural prowess. The Kuttam Pokuna, situated within the Abhyagiriya monastic complex, gained their name because of the twin ponds built adjoining each other and are a great example of the refined architecture employed during the period. This pond is called Yathurupokuna, which is the vernacular for key, as it is built in the shape of a key. At 150 meters long and 50 meters wide, the Atpokuna is truly the largest pond built in the Anuradhapura kingdom. This beautiful pond, built in resonance with its natural surroundings, is the Kaludya Pokuna, situated close to Mihintale. This pond too is thought to have been built to provide for the needs of the monks of the many monasteries within the kingdom. These two beautiful ponds, built within the Ranmasu Uyena Gardens, hark back to the luxurious lifestyles of the ancient royals of Anuradhapura. Incomparable in artistic beauty, this pond is decorated by beautiful carvings and is thought to have been the pond built for the king to bathe in. Archaeologists believe that it was built by the great connoisseur of art, King Kashyapa. The roadways of Anuradhapura were complete with many sturdy stone bridges such as this. Made for the easy passage of royals and traders, evidence exists to say that some of these stone bridges extended up to one and a half kilometers. As a city of monasteries, Anuradhapura was filled with many halls for almsgiving and this alms hall in the Abhyagiriya complex remains preserved to date. These boat-like giant receptacles are thought to have held the rice and other dishes prepared for the monks. It is clear that up to 5,000 monks could have been offered alms to at any one time. This highly sophisticated hospital complex in Mintalia, dating to between 6th to the 8th century AD, displays the advanced medical practice that existed in Sri Lanka at the time. These architectural monuments are evidence indeed 
that the Anuradhapura civilization was as developed and sophisticated to any other compatible world civilization at the time. Marking the beginnings of Sri Lanka's agricultural civilization, the kingdom of Anuradhapura spreads over a scenic area, drawing tourists from the world over even today to leave an indelible mark etched in their memories. <laughs> <laughs>